Today's kombucha recipe question is, how can I measure the amount of sugar in my kombucha tea? So you think the easy answer would be, well just start with less sugar or don't add sugar. And that's definitely a no-no. Definitely not to use no sugar. You could adjust your initial sugar slightly. There is a range. However, um, keep in mind that the sugar is not really for you. It's for your kombucha culture, your kombucha mushroom, scoby, whatever you want to call it. All right. So your kombucha culture will convert that sugar. If you're using, let's say, one of our preferences is organic fair trade evaporated cane juice sugar, um, that will, the yeast will break that down into fructose and glucose. We're getting technical for a second. And that uh, glucose will continue to get broken down by the yeast into um, alcohol. And that alcohol will get converted into acetic acid. And that glucose will also get converted into um, gluconic acid and other types of organic acids, leaving you with acetic acid, some organic acids, gluconic acids, um, vitamins and minerals from both the sugar and the tea, as well as probiotics, all that fun stuff. So the sugar though, how do we reduce the sugar? Well, you just simply let it ferment a little longer. So as you're fermenting your tea, the longer you ferment, the more that tea, remember we just spoke about it in very scientific terms, continues to get broken down, right? So that glucose will continue to convert into acetic acid and into gluconic acid and also a little byproduct of alcohol. One way though to ensure, because there's going to be a balance of, well, how do I get my tea then to taste good without it going too vinegary because the longer you ferment, the lower sugar, but the more vinegary taste. And that problem is solved in another article called How to Make Your Kombucha Taste Really Yummy Through a Secondary Fermentation Process.